All right. What's up and welcome to the live stream for the Lenovo Legion 7. I'm going to make sure this is good to go. Sounds like it's working just fine. So uh, we're going to give everyone a minute or two to get into the stream, but I'm going to go ahead and just start off with an intro and get right into it. So uh, you can see for the live stream overview, if I uh, go back to this view, we got the Lenovo Legion 7i in this box right here. I just got it in the mail this morning. Uh, very excited about it. Um, we're going to do an unboxing uh, overview, first of all, which is what we're doing right now. Uh, we're going to do an overview of the specs of the Legion 7 that I'm unboxing, as well as what you could potentially buy. Um, we're going to compare it with some of the other laptops on the market, why you might want to get this one, why you might not. And we're, of course, going to be talking about that throughout this whole live stream. So, um, you know, to compare this with the uh, X17, the MSI GE76, and some of the other high-performance laptops out there. Um, like my SCAR 15, another competitor. Uh, we're going to unbox the laptop. We're going to set it up. We're going to test the keyboard, the flex, uh, trackpad, evaluate the ports. We're going to go through and, you know, the whole time answering questions as well. Uh, we're going to evaluate the ports on the back. We're going to uh, test the speakers, run time spy, Cinemage R20, uh, and then play a game. I'm not sure if we're going to do Cyberpunk 2077 uh, or another game. Possibly we'll see. Um, to put play a play a game so just going to see how it handles but um but yeah that's kind of the, that's the agenda for today let's go ahead and see let's go ahead and see uh how it how it does i'm really excited about this um let's go ahead uh, if you enjoy this live stream and you want to see me live stream more drop a like leave me a comment um and if you have any constructive feedback or criticism or whatever i'm always open to that as well What's up, everyone? I see a bunch of people hi hopping on the stream. Welcome, welcome. Uh, will you ever review to return to the normal video style? Yes, Jason. It's just uh, I've honestly uh, I really like doing the live streams and I like making the videos. I think it's just a matter of um, getting down and doing the hard work. You know, it's a it's a lot of hard work making detailed reviews with complex b-roll making the graphs um i'm looking to hire someone to help me uh, like a production assistant basically to help with the graphs and help manage the spreadsheet and everything but let's go ahead um so i just want to address that real quick i i really want to make a lot of content i really do it's just i think it's I'm, i need to get in the mental headspace of like getting into the grind because it really is a grind and I, I enjoy reviewing it's just getting into that mode and you know, I love helping people. I love uh, that's honestly the main reason why I do it. Um, I love helping people decide what laptop. It's just very satisfying for me. So, um, so John Hartley says I have the i7 3070 model on order from Lenovo. I'm very excited to see this. Cool. Yeah. I mean, let's go ahead and dive into an overview of this laptop that I have on hand. So, here is the uh, comparison spreadsheet. Doggos are barking at something. Um, here's the comparison spreadsheet. Uh, this is the model that I ordered right here. Um, if we go over to head, head over to Lenovo's site. Now this spreadsheet is linked in the description down below. You can use this to compare basic CPU and GPU benchmarks across a whole bunch of different laptops. I've got a list of my top recommended gaming laptops right here. Um, I've got, uh, I'm going to be updating this list and I'm going to be working on my next major video is either going to be a review of the X17, the, um, the C the seven I or the AMD Radeon RX 6800M AMD Advantage Strix G15 edition. Um, we'll see. Anyway, um, and then also I'm going to be doing a best gaming laptops kind of comparison videos, um, or maybe a series of videos talking about which which laptops are the best for the different price points and stuff like that. So, uh, jumping into the configuration options for the seven I. Now I ordered this at the uh towards the end of july i think it was about uh, two weeks ago is when i ordered it even though it said four months on the shipping date i ordered it anyway um hoping that it would ship faster and it did it shipped a lot faster it only shipped, it only took like uh, six days to ship or a, a week to ship so um it was very very nice uh now so you can see that the basic model of this comes with the i7 11 800 h uh, and then you can get a $400 upgrade. 
But in order to upgrade this to the i9-11980HK, you have to also get the RTX 3080 and a bigger SSD size. So you're getting the 3080 and the bigger SSD size when you click this. So the price jumps up massively, not just 400. It goes up to 31.99. Now it still says ships in three months. That wasn't accurate for me. I don't know, you know, depending on supply and demand, this may ship faster or slower. Um, it says the this cheaper the cheaper version here uh, ships in what the what the base i7 and RTX 3060. It ships a lot faster, is what it says. Um, let me go ahead and check check chat real quick. Um, okay, all right. So going back over here, cool. So the different options, basically you can get the i7 11800H or you can get the i9 11980HK for your processor. Um, and if you get the upgraded processor or upgrade, you have to upgrade certain components on here in order to get access to uh, the RTX 3070 and 3080 options. Um, but if you get the i9, you have to get the 3080. So the 3070 and 3060 option, the 3060 and 3070 options disappear, which kind of sucks because what if someone just wants higher speed processor and they don't want this uh, fast of GPU, you can't get the i9 with the RTX 3060, for example. Um, now, they offer a number of different uh, upgrades for the RAM. For example, you can get the 32 gig DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM. I don't know about the speeds of everything and I can't remember, did I get, did I get upgraded RAM? I don't think I did. I just got the six, yeah, I got 16 gigs of RAM on this unit. So um, most likely if I, this is a laptop I believe I'll be switching to because um, I decided I'm not going to stick with the X, Alienware X17. Um, and so I'm going to potentially look at this one as replacing my SCAR 15 instead. Uh, and I'll talk, I'll, I'm going to make a video about the Alienware X17 and why I'm returning it. So uh, and why it's not the right laptop for me doesn't mean the X17 is not the right laptop for other people, though. Um, it just depends on what you want, what you need in a laptop. Okay, so the so the display on this is a 16 by 10, 16 inch, 2560 by 1600, uh, 500 nits HDR 400, 165 hertz. Uh, last time, it, last time on the Legion 7, this I believe is the exact same screen. This was 93% sRGB as measured by my Spider 5 Elite. Um, this measures a few percent lower than most others, though. So um, the budget versions of this machine would be with the i7-11800H. Uh, and then you go down here and you get, uh, let's say, a 3060 or 3070. Um, I'd probably recommend the 3070 if I were to be... The i7 with the 3070 is going to be your best bang for the buck option overall. Um, so, and that's going to be 21... 0999. Still going to be very good performance, I think. Good enough for QHD gaming for the vast majority of games. Um, and so you really just, you're paying a massive premium to get the 3080 and the i9 like I've got in this unit here. So uh, that's kind of the, the way I see it is that uh, only get the i9 11980HK if you just money is no object and you don't really care because it's probably only going to be a little bit faster um, for just a lot of money, like $400 and $600 for the GPU and CPU. So it's like over a $1,000 increase to get the 3080 version of this machine. Okay. So let's go ahead and check out the, uh, let's go ahead and check out the chat here and get back to start this unboxing. Um, when you proceed to check out, it says not available. Interesting. I originally ordered it, it said six months, so I canceled the LOL. Uh, then I gave in and reordered it again, and it went down to three weeks shipping. Hmm. Yeah, so in general, I think the um, availability for the highest demand laptops, are it's improving um, better than it was in the past. Um, it's not ideal yet, but um, for example, I think the availability of Ryzen processors are improving dramatically because of the competition from Intel and probably from supply chains free freeing up a little bit. What's up, Steven? From uh, owner disowns in here. Okay, so uh, there's the packaging. This is the exact same packaging and box as the Legion 7. 
Requiem X just ordered mine today. Can't wait. Cool, man. Congrats. Okay. Same for me, US out of stock. Gotcha. Well, I mean, I, there's going to be a limited number of these that are, are going to be available to ship. So I can understand if it gets sold out. Um, this is definitely one of the top laptops that money can buy without owner to own. Uh, I'm jealous. I would love that laptop. I know this is probably going to be my personal laptop. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, Carlos Leon, hey, were you reviewing the Razer Blade 17 with the new Intel CPU? Um, maybe if the if Razer sends me one. I don't think I'm going to spend money on it, though, to get one. Boop. Okay, well, the plastic little... I'm like reading chat, and the practice plastic little uh, doohickey at the top here broke off. And also, I want to mention that the uh, the box handle right here, this little handle thing... Uh, broke off before i even got it in uh before us ups or whatever dropped it off so okay so uh i want to mention that we've got this cool holographic design i'm not sure if you can see that let me i think you can see that yeah cool holographic lenovo logos on the box i like that i like little subtle touches like that uh, that was not on the legion 7 box i don't think Do you think the Asus Advantage is good? Um, yeah, Fozzie, I do. I, uh, I've i been playing around with the Legion, uh, the AMD Strix G15 Advantage. Um, played a few hours of Fortnite on it the other day. Had a great experience overall. Um, I'm, I haven't done deep dive into that system yet, but, but yeah, I, I still recommend it. I still think it's very good value for the money. Okay. Um, here's a little intro overview card comes in the box power adapter goes in the back webcam privacy button and yeah, well, just basically all the basic stuff um the only thing that you really may want to pay attention to here is the uh the shortcuts if you press fn plus q you can change the performance mode um i believe fn plus r also changes the refresh rate of the display at least it used to um and then yeah so there's just a handful of different things here uh, it looks like FN plus four puts the laptop to sleep. Yeah, there's a few different keyboard shortcuts there. Not a huge deal, but. All right. Okay, here we are. Wrapped in cloth. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know why why did they why did they put this here? Like it's just supposed to grab it from there or something, but it um was even wasn't even sticking out, I don't think. Anyway, there it is. This looks identical to the Legion 7. Like I cannot physically tell any difference between the, the 7i and the Legion 7. At least so far. Let's go ahead and open up the top here. Boom. Um love the build quality uh and like kind of craftsmanship on this machine it feels just incredibly well built um at least the, the legion 7 did i haven't i have not done the flex test and all of that yet on this one now i did go ahead and buy the extended warranty from lenovo on this i think it was only 60 dollars for four years or something like that it was ridiculously good value so i was like that's one of the cheapest extended warranties I've ever seen. Um, I don't know if there's any kind of deductible. Uh, I don't know exactly all the details of the extended warranty, but I think it was accidental protection for another $50. So I was like, ah, screw it. I'll do it. Um, I hope it's a good warranty coverage. Um, if I have to use it, I'll try to let you guys know what I think of it. Have I played much Warzone lately? Um, warnings, I have not played Warzone much lately. Okay, so in the box, we've got... Um, We've got the sticker, uh, like a Legion sticker. We've got, what is this? Another, uh, it's, a, it's a Legion. So this is the Legion logo, and then this one's actually the Legion emblem. Um, yeah, a bunch of fine print. And then in here, we have 
Lenovo Legion represents an unbridled passion to journey where other gaming brands fear to tread by pioneering expertly crafted gaming machines that combine battle-ready high-performance hardware, modern and premium designs with seamless user experience. So uh, I would tend to agree with that. I think the biggest downside for the Legion lineup, at least lately, has been the, um, the memory issues, though a lot of manufacturers have been dealing with that. Uh, Steven says, the tech, their tech service is great. They sent someone to my house. Nice. Is that with the extended warranty or the standard warranty? And I, I think one of the biggest things that I've seen um, companies do, not saying Lenovo does this, but um, you know, a lot of companies, they will kind of pseudo scam you with the extended warranties by having deductibles, like hidden deductibles they don't realize is in there um, when they need to do service calls. So I, I hope Le Lenovo doesn't do that. I don't know. So. Yeah. Does the RTX 3080 in this model have 16 gigs of VRAM? I believe it does. 404 King. I'm pretty sure that it does. Yeah, 16 gigs. The RTX 3070 has 8 gigs, and the 3060 has 6 gigs. Okay, so there's the laptop. Love the keyboard on this. This is one of my favorite keyboards um, in the gaming laptop of Sphere. Um, one of the reasons why I decided to go with this one, honestly, over the Alienware X17, I really love the Legion 7 keyboard. Um, between the, the full-size number pad, the feel of the keys are soft, but still tactile enough and decent travel. I just really like that style. Um, that said, I really also love the, um, the SCAR 15. The SCAR 15 also has kind of a soft feel, but it's got that optomechanical kind of click to each of the key presses that helps you get, kind of get a good feel for when the key press happens. So in some ways I'll kind of miss that click, uh, but the feel of the material of the keys here just feels very, very premium. Um, so overall, I think I, I will enjoy the keyboard on the Legion 7 still a bit more than the SCAR 15, mainly because of the actual physical uh, number pad, because I do use a number pad pretty often when doing things like work on the spreadsheet with all the gaming laptops. Okay. They give you 12 months of the plus version for free whenever you do the Lenovo Legion 7. Well, that's cool, Steven. I, I think um, I can definitely appreciate it when a company sends a technician to your house. I know Dell does that typically. Um, and then the uh, Lenovo also tends to do that. I think I just don't understand how Lenovo can afford to do an extended warranty so inexpensively when they're sending technicians to people's houses. It just doesn't make sense to me. I'm like, there's you know, all these other companies charging $400 for the extended warranty, and then you still have to ship the laptop into their factory. And, and like Lenovo's sending a technician to your house, and it's only hundred and twenty dollars for a four-year warranty like what is that you know like i don't understand how uh they plan to be able to keep that going long term but <laughs> we'll see i guess right okay interested in the difference between this keyboard and the msi steel series laptop keyboards uh they're very similar in feel in my opinion um you know i've had my hands on the GS66, the GE66, the GP66, and the GE76 um, this year, all from this year. Um, well, I guess the not the GE76 from this year, but all the other ones from this year. Um, one second, I got to plug this in. And I'll say in general, the... Um, the keyboard feel is very similar between the Legion and the MSI. I really like them both. I like, really like all of them. Okay. There we go. We are we are turned on. The software is rolling. And this is a beautiful freaking computer. <laughs> I love the circular LED design. That's one of the reasons why I decided to go this route as well. Um, you know, the Alienware has the cool circular RGB on the back, but this has circular RGB that goes around the whole computer. So, yeah.
So there's the, um, that's the look of the machine when the lights, like this is a medium dark room. It's not even that dark really. Um, so it's, it's still lots of uh, bright RGBs that look really, really cool. Let's go ahead and mute Cortana. Cool, cool. Um, I think one of the other reasons why I decided the X17 wasn't for me was just the keyboard shortcuts were not very intelligently set up, I don't think. Um, bit annoying. Okay, uh, Andrew, if you want to know the price, I went through a breakdown overview of the price on this Legion 7i at the beginning of the, uh, the video or, or of the live stream. Is the RTX 3080... Uh, faster than the 37 on a laptop uh yes but it's uh it's it, the tdp makes such a big difference in um laptop performance that you got to be uh mindful of you have to be really mindful of what tdp you're buying because a slow like a really low tdp 3080 let's say it goes down to 80 watts will underperform versus a 140 watt 3070 um and pretty much everything. So, yeah, TDP can make a big difference. Okay, let me go ahead and turn the lights back on. Oh, I saw a comment as well that I... Red Guard says, hey, Gizmo, thanks for review of the Gigabyte G5. It rocks most of my games at 144 hertz. Best upgrade... From my old GTX 970, yeah, that Gigabyte G5 was really—it's a, a crazy amount of performance for only 1,100 bucks. Um, how much was this laptop? Uh, I believe, as configured with this model, it was about uh, 3,400 plus shipping and tax. I think. So. Let me just get this. going all right all right let's get this uh camera position so that we can see um i guess yeah let's go ahead and just do the touchpad uh looks like i may have mistyped the password here Do huh, it says it's connected and secured. Interesting. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and mm, yeah, let's do a flex test and keyboard test real quick. Okay, and then I'll try to answer some questions as well. JJ Hernandez says, Hey Gizmo, I'd like to ask if a Zephyrus G15 3060 is worth it. A 3060 is $400 less than a 3070 here in uh, PH. I'm guessing it's the Philippines. Um, so I think, a, I think the 3070 is still a nice upgrade in the Zephyrus G15. Um, and I would recommend the 3070 for QHD gaming if you have a QHD display on that Zephyrus G15. So if you can, I think the 3070 is worth it. But uh, the 3060 is also good. Um, so kind of take it. I think I think either option is a good value. So decide just decide on your budget between those two. Okay, just just know that you're sacrificing some performance for portability with the Zephyrus series. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and do a flex check. Very minimal flex going around the sides here. Just a little bit by the keyboard. I really like how firm this is. It's very firm pretty much everywhere. Let's go ahead and go get this going here real quick. Okay. 
throughout the entire chassis of the keyboard, I would say very minimal flex, which is really good because, oh, I'm not, sorry guys, let me switch that so you can see. Um, so you can see very minimal flex, even when I push down really hard. Um, this this all metal chassis is just very well built. Um, so, yeah, I really, really like that. Okay, I'm going to get logged in. Yeah, I think uh, for today, I'm just going to do, um, just going to make sure the laptop's working every, all fine and everything, and then uh, I'll eventually switch my SSDs over to um, eventually switch my SSDs over from my SCAR 15 if I decide to keep this. Um, okay. Uh, Gamer Boy official, when is this available in India? I am not sure. I do not know. Um, I think prices should drop because I remember on 2019, the higher end Raider was 2799. Now it's so expensive at 3399. Um, I think what you're going to see is that the ultra premium spec machines like this one, uh, the prices are probably not going to drop for a while, but, uh, and I think what, so for the Legion series and for other really high demand series like the SCAR 15, Zephyrus G15, I don't think the prices on those ones are going to drop for a long time. But you'll see better availability over the next few months. Uh, and what you'll see is that com competing laptops that maybe aren't selling quite as well uh, because they're not the optimal pick, those laptops might have price drops or sales go on. So. Uh, Gizmo Slip Tech, if I return my Legion 5 17 inch with 5800H and RTX 3060 and upgrade to the 10 980HK and 3080 and the Legion 7i, would it be worth it? Um, for QHD gaming, the graphics card upgrade would be pretty massive. The processor performance would be marginally better, not massively better, but it would be a little bit better. Um, only do that, I would say only do that if you like really want to have um, the most performance possible. Is the difference between the i9 10980HK and the i9 11980HK a huge since the 10980H has a higher boost speed of 5.3 versus the 5 gigahertz and the 11980HK? Um, for 404 King, I think the performance is going to be, um, the performance difference will be different. Like, will be, uh, there is a jump, especially for things like video rendering and stuff like that. Um, let me just see here. No, do not share my email with that company, please. Okay. Um, I'd have to actually take a look at some numbers between the 10980HK and the 11980HK, but um, the difference in performance is there. It's just, it's not going to be massive, massive, so. Is the vapor chamber only present in the 11980HK? I have the ordered the uh, 11800H3080. Um, I'm not sure, Nitesh. I believe, based on the things I've seen, the bottoms taken off of all the different ones, I think they all have the vapor chamber. I'm not sure if someone with the other version of the laptop can clarify that, but uh, I'm pretty sure they all have that. But I'm, I'm not confident, or at least a mixture of vapor chamber heat pipes. So I, I can't really answer your question. Okay. Trevor Smith, I'm curious how this laptop performs against the MSI GE76 with the new Intel 11th gen. Um, yeah, I'm not sure either yet. Uh, I don't know exactly how well this is going to perform. I think this one will have less CPU performance than the Alienware X17. But it's hard to know until we actually get benchmarking it and testing it out. So here we are getting, there we go. Okay. Man, I love the, um, I love the 16 by 10 aspect ratio of this display. It's very, I don't know. It's very, it's, it's satisfying. 
you know like when you you've got the the i got my scar 15 right here you know and you just got this big like inch long bar of black of bezel that's like on on this one you just don't have that you know it's very small bezel along the bottom i love i love the small bezel okay Hey, Gizmo, when are they going to restock the Zephyrus G15 3070? Uh, they've been restocking it pretty regularly. So if that's the one you want, then uh, you just have to check it pretty often, I would say. Just just keep checking it. Um, sign up for notifications on it if there's that option. Um, but I would say that it comes in back into stock like once a week at least. So probably multiple times a week. Let's see here. I think this has an antivirus. On it, yeah, we got McAfee here, so let's go ahead and delete that. Okay. Uh, we are removing all files. Yes, remove. Okay. Did you buy this in the UK or the US? I got this in the US. Will this laptop outperform the Asus G15 Advantage Edition? Um, yes, it should outperform that machine uh, noticeably. And it makes sense it should outperform it uh, because it's twice as much money as the, it's more than twice as much money. Right now, the AMD Asus Advantage Edition is um, $14.99. It's a $150 sale uh, over at Best Buy. So we're getting updates and on the installing here. Let me just show you that uh, that sale. It's kind of insane, actually. Uh, this had, I think, a $50 sale on it before, maybe a $100 sale on it. Uh, and now it's I, it's pretty amazing that they did this sale, honestly. Cause I'm, I'm sure it's still selling well. Maybe it's not selling as well as they had hoped because there was some controversy around it during its initial launch. Uh, like if you see some of these reviews, there's some negative reviews uh, because they ship some lemons to people. And... Uh, yeah, like just a handful of people had dead on arrival laptops, so they gave a bunch of one star reviews. It was like either five stars or one star. Um, but I mean, getting everything on this laptop is really incredible for the money, except maybe the 512 gig SSD and the slow RAM and the, the missing MUX switch. But uh, the fact that you're getting the top of the line CPU, top of the line GPU for $14.99, great display, 300 hertz display. Oh, it's some great value there okay yeah i mean if you're if you're on a fifteen hundred dollar budget it's probably my number one recommended laptop still that uh amd advantage edition but uh it's not gonna be for everyone because uh maybe the radeon rx 6800 has driver issues with the specific um game you play or something you know so or is 15p uh so Warney's World, chin bezel has never bothered me. Remember three years ago when the bezels were an inch all the way around? That was nasty. <laughs> yeah. Oris 15P is also a great option. I think it costs $1,600. So it's a little bit more than the AMD Advantage Edition right now. Um, but the the new 2021 Oris 15P does not have a MUX switch on it. So uh, it's in the same same problem i guess as the amd advantage edition so is the hp element 17 a better value with the 11 800h and 3070 um i'd have to take a closer look johnny saxon i haven't added that to my sheet yet that was recently launched so okay let's get windows update going um let me also check for looks like our internet yeah, our internet connection. Let's see if it's working or not. It must be working because it, it did. I think I just don't have it set to automatically connect. Um, so yeah, I really like the Aorus 15P still. If you need an Intel laptop and something that's less gamery looking, uh, that's another good option uh, around the $1,500 price point. Would you recommend the Asus Strix G15 Advantage for 3D modeling and rendering? Uh, JJ, you'd have to just uh, look at some specific examples of the software you use with the RX 6800M because you want to uh, just make sure that it works properly, basically. Um, 
the, the like because basically that's the downside. I think the biggest. I think that's arguably the biggest downside of the ASUS uh, AMD Advantage Edition is just Radeon drivers are not typically as mature as the NVIDIA drivers. Um, NVIDIA has NVIDIA works with so many different software companies and game developers to make sure that everything's optimized as quickly as possible. Any bugs are fixed as quickly as possible. Um, they're still not perfect. Look at the new world crashing and burning up some of the RTX 3090s, right? Uh, but they tend to be better, I think, on average than the RX 6800M um, drivers would be. Or, so that said, AMD still supports their drivers. It's just they're not on top of it as as much, especially like for, for years, for example, you know, um, you could use an NVIDIA GPU to help boost um, rendering performance in certain things like After Effects, uh, but you couldn't use an AMD GPU. So like you you don't like that's a very software specific thing that AMD had an advantage in for a long time. Um, but AMD's caught up now, and now you can do it. So it just that's why I'm saying take a look at the individual applications that you need to use and see how uh, see how the 6800M handles those applications specifically. And, and that's going to be hard information to find, and you may have to just buy one and try it uh, ultimately to be able to figure out if it works for you or not. Nichesh Bolaki says, "Great channel. Is this a review model? Did they give you the fast RAM version?" How can you tell and would you recommend which RAM and SSD to get for this machine? Sorry for the loads of questions. Okay. Um, thanks for stopping, Nitesh. Uh, this is a model that I purchased with my own money and it will likely become my own personal laptop, I think, as long as everything is fine on the laptop and the performance is up to snuff. Um, so not a review unit, though the Lenovo Legion 7 they sent me before was a review unit. Um I think Lenovo was going to send me a Legion 5 or 5 Pro next or something like that. We'll see. Now, uh, how do you test if there is fast RAM? So the best way, I think, to test, the most reliable way to test is not to necessarily look at the RAM model, though that can be a good indicator as well, uh, but actually just running some RAM tests, uh, like either run Shadow of the Tomb Raider and then compare benchmarks with other laptops of a similar uh, configuration. Um, you can also run like things like uh, me different memory tests and memory benchmarks. Uh, and then you can actually see the latency, the read-write speeds. You can also check your timings with Zen timings. Um, but most people aren't going to know how to test you know, or to read the timings. So I, that's why I'm saying if you just do like something like CPU benchmark uh, and look at the results, you, those are just like straight like memory performance speed tests. Uh, that you can compare with other people. Um, so it's a little bit easier to know if you got like slow memory or fast memory. I'm hoping that they shipped fast memory with the Intel versions of these laptops. Hello, I just got the same model at the door. Oh, what do you mean? Actually, last minute, were you actually able to buy this in store somewhere? Uh, I had an AMD GPU and never had any driver problems with that GPU. And a year later, I bought an NVIDIA GPU. And now my laptop GPU and I have had driver issues. <laughs> AMD has the best drivers in my case. Gotcha, Mike. Yeah, no, I mean, that's just my take on it and my experience. Um, it's going to vary, especially depending on what games or software you play. Uh, at Gizmos Live Tech, why are you testing with super slow RAM? Throws results out the window. We've already been through this with other laptops. Um, robotic venom. What do you mean, man? Uh, we don't we don't know that like Lenovo has not like this is a brand new laptop. Very few users have the Legion Seven I, um, and it's a a good chance that they might be shipping different RAM with a Intel based, um, an Intel based laptop. You know, maybe they found that Intel performs better with certain RAM or something, so they might be shipping. It with different RAM, you know, and they're priced differently than the Legion 7 as well. So uh, we need to actually do tests and find out. Like I just unboxed this, so I don't know what RAM's in this yet. Um, Karasu, hey, is it worth waiting until September to see new releases before buying a laptop right now? Um, so Karasu, I would say that this laptop is a great option if you're looking for um, high performance. Um, like this was just released. And 
the thing, whenever someone says, should I wait to buy? I always say, basically, technology will always keep getting better. And it's always going to be the case that if you wait, you'll always be able to get something better. Um, but right now, I think it's still a decent time to buy, a solid time to buy. Um, we don't really have anything waiting around the corner yet. Um, if you're going to wait to buy, I would say wait. You're probably going to have to wait between four to four to eight months probably for the next version of the GPUs to launch. That'll be the next big thing that comes out. Full movie. Hey, Gizmo, keep up your good work. Thanks, man. Jill Bear, I've had my 7i from Lenovo for three days now. Great laptop, great thermals. It just really needs a manual fan option. Um, yeah, Joe, that's one of the big downsides for the Legion series, at least from what I've seen. They, they do not do manual fans. I'm not sure. We can probably get some kind of manual fan override if some techies get in there and program something or make it compatible with some fan control softwares. So why would you choose this over the MSI GE76 11th gen? Uh, Gabriel, great question. I think the number one reason is um, probably portability. The Legion 7 has a 16 by 10, 16-inch 16 display. It's the size of a 15-inch laptop, while at the same time having the same TDP of 150 base TDP to 165 watts on the GPU. So you're getting a high amount of performance in a more portable form factor. I don't know what the CPU performance is going to look like on this machine yet. I hoping it's going to be good cpu performance but i'm anticipating that the tdp on the cpu will not be as high for example as the lead uh as the alienware x17 where we were pulling over 100 watts like 108 watts consistently non-stop um so i doubt this will be able to go to 108 watts non-stop so i'm expecting less cpu performance from this legion 7i um and you couldn't go to that high either on the ge76 so the cpu performance is probably going to be similar ish but the basically, I think the the main reason to go with the Legion 7i is just the, the portable form factor, the great build quality, the cool RGBs, the nice keyboard touchpad. Um, and it's still a fairly reasonable-ish price, um, especially if you configure it without the i9 processor. Does this have advanced Optimus? Uh, I believe this just has a MUX switch. So let's go ahead. Well, this is when we have Windows Update installing. Let's go ahead and just take a look through the... Um, the software here that comes in the laptop. So let me make sure that we are in focus. Okay, uh, gaming version of Vantage makes it simple for you to improve your gaming experience. Okay. How will you be using your device, gaming and work? Uh, please tell us about your interests, optional, no. Do not want that. Okay. All right. So you can see that we have the MUX switch right here, which is this hybrid mode button. Um, so if I would turn this off, okay. If I turn this off, if I turn this off, it doesn't want to switch for me. I don't know why it's not going, but it's not interested in the switching. Uh, let's go ahead and switch to performance mode now. But uh, basically, if I turn this off, it'll basically make it so you get really crappy uh, battery life, but it boosts your performance, especially in CPU-bound games. Carmen says, it has advanced Optimus. I have one. Really? Okay, so if it has advanced Optimus, why is there the hybrid mode button? Maybe this is something they need to update in software? Uh, I guess we'll see as we tried doing stuff. Because uh, advanced Optimus means you don't have to restart your machine to completely bypass the integrated GPU. What's up, Archer? Um, so far, you're saying, uh, what's up, what did I miss? So, so far we, we went an overview of the specs of the laptop in the beginning, um, the different ways you can configure this machine and how long it took me to order this and stuff like that. Um, I also compared it briefly with some of the other laptops on the market. Answered a bunch of questions, uh, unboxed it, um, and now we're doing Windows updates and checking out the performance um, profiles. So um, overall, I really, really like the touchpad in this machine. It's got a smooth surface, it's a large surface, it's easy to click. It's the same touchpad as the Lenovo Legion 7 as far as I can tell. 
Um, I do need to reverse the scroll direction. I want down to go down, not up. That's better. Okay. Um, yeah, I think if there's any major disadvantage that's pretty clear, um, it's a minor one. I guess it's a minor disadvantage, is that you don't have manual max fans. The only issue I have is backlight bleed. I have a replacement on uh, replacement unit on the way. Can you check yours? That's a good question. Um, let me try. Let me try loading up a black image and seeing what it's like. Um, the thing about checking black light bleed is that it's uh, just going to vary so much from laptop to laptop, and it's not really indicative of what um, you know each user is going to experience. Genesis, which ports connect directly to the GPU? And also, have you seen the Odyssey Neo G9? Um, I have not checked out the Odyssey Neo G9. So if you want to check which ports connect to your GPU directly, you can load up NVIDIA Control Panel. And you go, I think, to Manage Display Mode. OK, so Manage Display Mode, we have Automatic Select, Current Status, Integrated Graphics. Um, we can do Optimus or NVIDIA GPU only. I'm curious if we can do that on the fly. Let me just make sure that our Windows, I want to get all these Windows updates done before we try messing up stuff. Because if we take, if we switch to NVIDIA GPU only and it's installing the Intel driver, it could mess something up. Um, anyway, so if you want to know which, which uh, display outs connect directly to the NVIDIA GPU, you can check that under the configure surround physics inside of here you can see that the uh, physics would connect directly to the 3080 on the two display ports and the hdmi and that the internal laptop display right now is connected to the intel uhd graphics card so right now we have optimus selected okay i i believe we're we're done with the windows update so let's go ahead and get that going now All right, restart. OK. OK. Uh, all right. Let me let me just do a quick search for this Odyssey Neo G9. So I just know what it is. I'm guessing it's a, like a Cleaver or Tong thing. Oh, is that? Oh, it's a monitor. Okay. So it's an ultra wide monitor. Now, um, I actually have an older version of this exact monitor, I believe. Super ultra wide. It's upstairs right now. Um, and yeah, it's a very cool monitor for sure. You, you could, uh, I believe you could connect to that uh, monitor through. I, b I believe any of the ports, the display ports or the HDMI, because I think it's a 2.1 on this machine. Okay. Hi, RTX 3080, 8 gig, 130 watt versus 3070, 8 gig, 140 watt, which is better. Um, those are going to be, uh, the 3080 will probably be just a, a little bit faster, but it's going to be very close in performance. Um, so. In the unofficial Legion Discord, we have a dev making a fan control program for Legions. Nice. That would be pretty cool. Um, yeah, I would love that. Uh, I think a lot of people would use that. Doesn't the Legion 7i have advanced Optimus? Uh, Wild Command, Wild Commenter, it might. I will test it, see if it, it can switch on the fly. Um, in the control software, it seemed to indicate you couldn't do that, though. Um, but it does for sure at least have a MUX because that option is still in there. Whether or not you can switch the MUX on the fly without having to restart is the question. Lincoln Highway Mine is shipping on Monday. Nice. Wild Commenter, it doesn't need a reboot if you use Advanced Optimus in the Media Control Panel in my testing. 
Nice, Carmen. If that's the case, I that makes me love this computer even more. <laughs> you know? Oh, man. S job, yo gives us the tech. Love your videos. Many thanks for all the info. No problem, man. Is this the 17 inch? Looks more promising than the X17, honestly, with QHD screen option. Uh, Lantech, this is the 16 inch. Want to join and check the program out? Not sure if it's up and running on the uh, 7i though. Sure, Arthur, just uh, DM me on uh, Discord. The link to the the Legion. Okay, cool. All righty, so we are set up there. Let me go ahead and start uh, copying over some of these benchmarks. Oh, let's get make sure Windows Update's going again. Windows Update probably needs to do another, yep, another version update. Okay, so R20, R23. Afterburner, Origin, Spider 5, Steam, Heaven, XTU, Modern Warfare, Valorant, HW Info, Handbrake, Epic. <laughs> I've got a lot of things to install. Okay. Uh, Jill Bear, I know someone that had tried the Advanced Optimus today. He said it, it was very buggy. Well, if you can manually switch it on the fly without restarting, then in my opinion, that's the best because I actually, I don't really trust the computer yet to decide which GPU should be the main active one because too often it will activate the wrong one for the wrong application because there's thousands of applications out there. Like it may not realize I need the NVIDIA GPU for DaVinci Resolve, for example, you know, or whatever. Um, very very common problem so uh one way to to bypass that or fix that is just to manually control which gpu is active um and i really like being able to do that so let's go in back let's go back into the control panel here let's see if we can set this up uh which option is this under? I'm just switching between them here. Does it manage 3D settings? No? Hmm? Okay, looks like uh, our NVIDIA GPU is updated because we have a lot more options in here now. Um, looks like we are currently hooked directly through the NVIDIA GPU right now. If I switch this, I'm gonna try selecting the CPU option and hitting apply, applying changes. Did it do it without having to restart? I don't know that it did. It flashed this display. It flashed the display, but it's not indicating that the laptop display is going through this anymore. Probably the only way to really know for sure is to run a NVIDIA Optimus sensitive game and test it directly. Um, but that does seem to indicate that this has advanced Optimus, even if you have to manually control it. You know, I, I messaged, yeah, <laughs> kind of silly, but I did kind of, uh, I was trying to find out what this had on the inside, whether it had a MUX or advanced Optimus or what it had. Um, and the, I could not get the answer from, yeah. I could not get the answer from, uh, Lenovo. They were like, we don't know yet. Uh, that person didn't know, at least that I was talking to. Okay. Uh, all right. Bob Commenter, do you think the Ryzen is still the better pick overall? So when you get on a budget level, if the Ryzen model is cheaper, uh, it's likely a better bang for the buck. That's my take on it. But on the ultra high end, if you want to get just the maximum possible performance and you have infinite budget, the i9 11980HK in a high TDP chassis is definitely going to beat anything that AMD has right now. Um, but it requires more juice to have the same performance because it's not as power efficient. So if you're talking both are at 60 watts or something like that, the Ryzen processor I think is going to be better.
mm, I really like the keyboard on this thing. Why? I have authorized this. Why is it making me authorize again? Let me try opening it again. Is this better than the Omen 16? I have not uh, had hands-on with the Omen 16, so I'm not sure. But I imagine this is probably much more expensive than the Omen 16, so I think that's one very important factor to keep in mind. Um, but I, I think I think the Omen 16 would more likely be competi uh, competing with the Legion 5, 5i, 5 i pro i'm not sure all the models that lenovo has gizmo is this the model of the legion 7 available on amazon uh 404 king not that i know of but possibly i don't know Weird. Okay, that's I. I was waiting for it to send me a new code, but the new code didn't come, and then it like was working anyway. Okay, install. Now I should, at least in theory, I should be able to um, add another folder on my external SSD, and let's see if we can get this to work. All right. So it is detecting the 3D Mark application. Okay, it's doing a quick update. Nice. Um, it just Lenovo orders for right now. Yeah, likely that you can only probably buy this just through Lenovo, as far as I know. Um, or potentially, maybe sometimes Lenovo is listed on other sites like BH Photo and. Uh, BH Photo, sometimes Amazon. Um, very rarely you can get a Lenovo laptop, say on Walmart or on Best Buy, but usually they're like the older models. So it just depends. Uh, Cinder Block, how much is this? Uh, this model costs about, I think it costs me around 3600 I think. 3500 3600 Depends. I have to look at the invoice, but I think figured it was like 3400 something i don't know somewhere in that ballpark um plus shipping and tax uh jordi mateo hey gizmo can i run games off of an external ssd got my laptop on order and wondering if i need to install everything on an internal ssd or will it run fine off of an external ssd uh jordi it will run fine on an external ssd uh but uh, you're going to want to make sure that the for example the ssd stays the same drive letter number so that uh, like if you're plugging in an sd card and then you plug in the external ssd it doesn't like change the ss uh the assigned drive number and otherwise the games don't won't know where to when you try to launch a game it won't know where to find the files at uh thomas Miz, ouch that's expensive uh yeah so this is not a cheap laptop as I've configured it, but as I, I went over it in the beginning of the video, you can get this uh, starts at $1,800 from uh, Lenovo. And this is definitely in the more premium category of laptop, without a doubt. Um, you're paying for premium RGB, metal build quality, upgraded display, great keyboard trackpad, like it's a good speakers. Like there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of different things about like the premium laptops uh, that uh, you just won't get on the more budget-oriented machines. So, or it'll be like close, but maybe not quite as good. Like for example, the RGB won't be as bright, but maybe you'll have similar RGB. But like I said, maybe it's not as vibrant, or maybe the secondary keys don't light up. Um, Cinderblock says, "Oh, okay. I bought the Legion 5 Pro with QHD 3070 at Walmart for 1500-ish with tax." Yeah, that's a great price, man. Uh, without a doubt, that is a great price. The downside is there's very few of those available for purchase. So 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, that's definitely more in the bang for the buck category line of things than this laptop. This is a laptop is more the goal for this laptop is to primarily compete for the best laptop money can possibly buy. Have they fixed the Corsair software issue yet? I am not sure. I don't think so. Not as far as I know. You're going to probably want to, if you want to have good battery life, I believe you'll want to uninstall IQ Corsair software. Make sure that all of it's um, gone. I have not tested the speakers yet, but we could do that. Um, well, I want to get uh, I want to get Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Let me see if this can play. Um, let me see if I can. I want to I want to try Shadow of the Tomb Raider because that's a good game to test um, for Nvidia Optimus. See if if this has advanced Optimus for sure or not. Um, I want to verify the integrity of the files. Oh, I have to exit this. Okay. All right. And then, um, cool. Set up Dolby Atmos if it has it. Uh, it has Dolby Vision. Looks like that's the HDR of this machine. Um, let me try to download the black uh, image. Black blank image. All right. And then we can just see possibly that's not pure black. We need solid pure black image and then okay and then i have to turn hold on one second let me turn the uh, brightness of the environment down here this isn't really displaying correctly i have to save this we have two, they have little bars on the side. This is not the type of image that I'm hoping. Can I open with photos or something? I need a JPEG image. Um uh, oh I hate Bing. Like <laughs> I just hate I'm I'm in Google Edge yet. I haven't switched over to Firefox. So <laughs> I just like if I want to do JPEG so I can open it outside of um Microsoft Edge, I don't know how to do that with uh with Edge when it's like when it's doing what it's doing right now. Okay, let's, there we go. Should be able to open with uh, photos. There we go. And then we just zoom in all the way. Okay. It's not quite perfectly black, but I gotta say I'm seeing very little, very little uh, backlight bleed on this unit. It's not perfect, but it's it's pretty uniform. Also, this is not a purely black image. It's very close, but Let's see if we can try another image here. See, that is not all black either why it looks black here and then it's not i guess i gotta just make one okay paint black um, j 
Okay. <laughs> paint. Why do you do this to me, Paint? Okay. Good enough. All right. Uh, cool. There. Well, now let me try there. There. Okay. Now let me try this again. There we go. Let me turn the um, RGB off. Uh, there. Okay. Yeah, okay. So I would say in terms of backlight bleed, this is better than my SCAR 15. Just a little bit of backlight bleed in this corner right here. But yeah, this is excellent overall. Um, I would I would argue this is um probably one of the rare displays that have very little backlight bleed. But know that it will vary dramatically from laptop to laptop, so it's not very relevant really because you may get a lemon while other people get, you know, perfect. So overall, very impressed. Okay, turn the light back on. Looks like I got lucky overall. <laughs> okay. Looks like uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is re-downloading. Why does this have to be a lottery, though? So Daniel Barakit, basically when they make the display... Um, not all of the displays have a perfect level of quality, like when they're cut out from their original patterns. Uh, and so you just end up with varying levels of quality. And depending on, like, they don't want to throw away all the displays. And so they basically kind of segment them. They're like, they'll throw away the really bad ones. And they'll, they'll have a certain standard of display quality, basically. And People like uh, companies like Apple will have a really rigid standard. Um, people like Lenovo or Asus will have a moderately high standard, um, though it will depend on the budget of each laptop. The lower the budget, typically the lower the quality standard will be um, as far as backlight bleed goes and other things like RGB potential and display. Um, Neutron Star, impressive backlight bleed. Are you going to do an undervolt on this unit? Uh, I will definitely be doing an undervolt on this unit, without a doubt, as long as I can. I believe I will be able to an Intel XTU. Um, and uh, so that would be the game plan. Though, I mean, I, yeah, I might as well just do it. I don't think this, this does not come with Intel XTU. This Intel XTU was downloaded on July 23rd, so hopefully this is... So it's only a week old, this version of Intel XTU, so it should still be good. Um, I need to restart the machine before I can use it. It's fine. We'll let Shadow of the Tomb Raider finish downloading. So overall, I got to say, initial impressions of this machine has just been A++, like really, really good. Um, look at this, hybrid mode. This thing is no longer switched over. Let me pull this back over so it's a little closer so you can read it a little easier. Um, hybrid mode is no longer checked. Change will be effective after restarting the computer. I really wish this would be like, this is not a good UI. Uh, this needs to be like slid over and then grayed out or something. So it's indicating that it's going to, a, and then it needs to have a little message that shows up saying, will be changed on reboot. And then, you know, and then it's also confusing, I think, for people. Like uh, only really advanced users like myself or other you guys that are watching this are going to understand what's going on. Like if I can switch between this 
without restarting. That means we actually have advanced Optimus, which makes this button pointless. Also, why is it more going to be to restart if we have advanced Optimus? So it's it's very confusing. Um, how you say it's. This is going to confuse end users, even advanced users, about what's going on. <laughs> so, yeah, that's not a great design. Uh, Jack Black wants to know how much faster than a 30, 135 watt? Uh, is this 16 gigs, 3080? Yes, it is. I believe you're talking about like a 165 watt versus 135 watt uh, RTX 3080. Um, it's probably about a five to ten percent difference in performance for gpu bound games something like that or so it's going to be in that ballpark depending on the game um jack black what laptop is 135 watt um i believe the ge66 was 135 watt at the beginning of 2021 i'm not sure uh, initial impressions with this has been amazing. If you exclude backlight bleed, the only man in the Lenovo Vantage app, it gets the job done, but it's clunky. Yeah, this I, I like the design of this software o overall, like keeping it all in one panel. Too many applications have it being like five different panels for no reason. So I really like the software design in, in general, but just this MUX switch right here in particular is not good. I think it's probably being carried over. Like if this has advanced Optimus, it's probably being carried over from previous designs. Um, and also the fact that uh, like you, you can change something here and then you can also change something here. Like why, why don't we have this control just in the Lenovo Vantage software where we're just picking between the two modes um, or between auto uh, integrated GPU and dedicated gpu like why are why are we giving you know it's kind of like a double standard where we're not sure where we're supposed to switch what and how this affects the nvidia settings here so lenovo needs to iron that out alienware x17 or this uh dana my I, I haven't done the tests yet i need to see the performance of this so I can get a better idea of how this stacks up with the X17. I've done all my tests now on the X17, um, and it's very impressive performance, but very high temperatures. Um, I am anticipating this will not be able to beat the X17 in terms of raw CPU performance, I, though I think the GPU performance will be very similar. So, uh, but we need to do the test to find out, you know? So, yeah. Uh, do you guys think the i7 would be a better option for this laptop? I think the i7 will almost for sure be much better um, bang for the buck. Uh, it's, the i7 is always the better bang for the buck, but in this particular laptop, I don't think this laptop will have the thermal legs to really make the i9 stand out. Like I, We'll see, but I don't think we're going to be able to sustain over 100 watts of power to the i9. I'm, I'm anticipating more like 80 watts, but I'd love... I'd love it for Lenovo to prove me wrong and they like push over 100 watts consistently. I'd love that. Uh, Shineck, I had the Legion 5 Pro, poor quality control. The keyboard LEDs were constantly going nuts. Oh, that's too bad. Um, I got the Strix G17, 3070, 165 hertz instead. Okay, nice. Well, I think every, every single manufacturer has quality control issues sometimes. It's very rare that you will... Like even Apple has quality control issues sometimes where some key doesn't work or some pixel is stuck or whatever. Like there's, or some, you know, it just crashes on you or something. There's always quality control issues. And part of that is that um, there's, there are some issues in a laptop that you just can't know about until you stress test the crap out of it, until you use it for a while. And then you're like, oh, the memory is bad. Like it may pass a memory test initially, but then when you actually start using it over the long haul or heats up or something, it starts failing or whatever, you know? So let me, I don't know why I started Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but it looks like it's done. So we got to get this Windows update done here. We'll restart this. It's probably going to go back to a hybrid mode, which will be good, I guess. 
Um, can this outperform the Asus ROG S17? I'm not sure, 404 King. Um, for GPU performance, I think definitely. For CPU performance, I doubt it because the S17 has that open open keyboard design to allow tons of airflow. Um, like the S17, I've a, I, I saw a video of a guy on YouTube with the S17 pull in 6,000 in Cinebench R20 uh, on the S17 consistently. And that's part of that's just Silicon Lottery, but a large part of that is I think it was pulling 125 watts of power consistently on the S17 on the CPU. Um, so it just depends on what you're looking at. If you're looking at the CPU performance directly or the GPU performance. That said, I don't think Asus has designed the S17 to run that kind of wattage. I think that guy was overclocking it and bypassing BIOS settings and stuff like that. So um, not sure. Will you be comparing this with the standard Legion 7? Um, so Zeem, I have not had a comparable uh, standard Legion 7 to compare this. Like I don't, I never got to test the 3080 version of the Legion 7. Um, so it's a really, it's a, it's kind of an apples and oranges comparison, honestly, when you don't have the same GPU. Um, but for I'll, I, I can definitely compare CPU performance um, after we get all the tests done. So, okay. I imagine Windows Update is probably done now. But let's check to make sure. It says checked and up to date now. Huh? Yes, maybe. Let's go ahead and make sure the game bar is disabled. Uh, game mode, so there it is. Game mode settings, disable. Xbox game bar, disable. Cool. All right, and then we gotta go to GeForce Experience and disable that overlay. DJ Rocketman, hey Gizmo Slip Tech, have you had any issues with the X17? Would you personally buy one yourself? So DJ Rocketman, I did buy that myself and I am going to return my X17. Um, and I'm going to make a video explaining why, but it, it comes down to um, a number of things that are, uh, it comes down to a number of things that I think Alienware could have done better on the machine, though the core CPU performance is definitely there. Very warm temperatures. It there's a, it's, it's a pretty convoluted, complex explanation of why um, I am, deciding instead to go for something like the Lenovo Legion 7i. Uh, that said, I still think a lot of people, I, at least a, a certain subset of people, will still love the Alienware X17 as their main machine. Um, but I think more people would probably like something like the SCAR 15 or the Legion 7 or 7i over the Alienware X17. But the, I think there is still a market for X17 users who will be super happy with it. Um, and I can recommend it, you know, so. I got to say, overall, I'm very impressed with this display, just like on the Legion 7. Um, you know, we have great, almost no backlight bleed. It's very bright. It's vibrant. Um, 16 by 10, great to use. Um, okay, looks like I need to verify this. Okay, verified. Uh, 1080p or 4K on the X17. See, I think that's one of the biggest downsides for the Alienware X17 is you know you've got uh, limited display options. You don't have a QHD 240 hertz. I think that's the ideal display. Uh, and then you don't have Advanced Optimus or a MUX switch. So like there are just a couple of things on the Alienware X17 where you're paying like the ultimate price, like in terms of your wallet, but you're not getting the ultimate specs in terms of actually um, getting the delivered things. But in some ways you're getting, I think, better specs than just about any other machine at the same time in other ways, like the, uh, the CPU performance and the memory performance. But the lack of a MUX switch or advanced Optimus kind of negates some of those ultra high performance as well. So it's kind of like, it's like this weird trade-off and some of those things you're not gonna run into if you get the 1080p uh, 360 hertz option, like you get advanced Optimus on that machine. So <laughs> it's just a really just, it's like, it's 
the Alienware X17 is just it's a a mix of really really good in some ways and then kind of less optimal in other ways. Like you get Windows Hello on the uh, X17, but you don't get uh, an advanced Optimus or a Mux switch, which is not a huge deal for a 4K display, but it's still like like you're you're paying over four thousand dollars for the top of the line spec of the X17, and it's like you know it's probably like a fifty dollar cost for them to add that and then you're like i just wish they had added that you know so have i tested dolby atmos and could you give thoughts on if it's improving audio quality um and the zephyrus g15 series it definitely improved the audio quality um i want to see what version of the driver we're on because right now there's four seven one four one uh let's see here some information i guess Driver version is 46681. So we're quite a few versions behind. I doubt it'll affect just a couple of benchmarks, but this is not installing for some reason, and I just want to I want to keep making progress on this live stream. So um, I'll have to troubleshoot this for my actual live benchmarking session. So uh, just know that these benchmarks are being done on 466 uh, drivers instead of 471, which is... Uh, you know, probably not going to affect, like it'd probably be within one FPS difference between most of these, but, um, but yeah. Okay. So we need to get afterburner running. Ryan Matthew with the $1 super chat. Thanks so much. Uh, it's a $1 cost for a mux. You say that, but it's, it's not when you have to redesign the motherboard or, uh, reposition things on the motherboard or if there's just limited space like on a x17 it's a very thin machine um so they have to like take a lot of things factored in uh and factor those things in when they're designing it so um you know in terms of material cost many things on a machine are way less than what you actually pay for it in the end and yet you know it's going to cost then consumer way more than the, just the raw chip cost or material cost okay get this configured to show all of the information we want to see it is detecting the cpu right off the bat that's good The CPU power limit up there, average frame rate, 1% low. Uh, yes. And we need our raw frame rate. There it is. Okay. All right. And then add our benchmarking hotkeys. And I believe that's configured now. Do we have CPU clock? Yeah, okay. Cool. All right. Uh, I got the i7 11800H with the 3080, 32 gigs of RAM. Was that the right choice instead of going for the i9? Um, I believe so, Adib. Um, in terms of, in terms of uh, best performance for your money, it will almost always be better to get the i7 instead of the i9 because the i7 will be usually usually it's only like five to 15 percent slower but costs hundreds of dollars more um, but sometimes the i9 and i7 perform basically identically um, if the say the same power limit is reached and it's the same number of cores um, and the vast majority of everything else about it is the same then there's kind of it's almost pointless to get the i9 in some machines okay i believe we're ready to run time spy let's make sure Let's just check what we're at. Um, so we are in hybrid mode right now. So this is with Optimus enabled. Let's just verify that with NVIDIA control panel. So right now we're on the CPU, even though it says, right here it says that we are connected directly to the 3080 right now, which is, it's very, like, why does it say that? You know, if I unplug... Battery boost enabled on your system. Yeah, like right now we are almost for sure 
guess we can just open HW info to find out. We're we're I can almost guarantee you we're not uh, running with NVIDIA Optimus right now. Because the 3080 will be probably pulling power still. Yeah, the 3080 is pulling 15 watts of power. So we're going to have terrible battery life right now. We're not switching between the integrated and dedicated GPU. Um, even though... Maybe maybe this is not where maybe this is not advanced optimus. This is it right here. Okay, so it's right now it's set to automatically select. Um, current status is set to discrete graphics. Um, let's try let's try setting this to optimus. Apply. Yeah. So this is manage display mode is where we need to go. And whoa, did you guys see the display colors change when it switched? Um, everything is much different white balance now. Okay, um, Sean X says, how big is the difference to the AMD version? Um, not sure yet. We need to actually do tests. I haven't done tests yet. So, uh, and now if I pull up HW info, let's see. I apparently closed HW info instead of minimizing it. But um, let's see. NVIDIA GPU pulling 15 watts and now it's pulling zero watts now it's pulling 11 watts so the nvidia gpu is still turning on just like it did before with the legion 7 probably from the iq corsair software triggering it to turn on so the battery life is still going to be very bad right now um that's a shame uh let's try setting it to nvidia gpu mode only can we do this Okay, so notice the display colors change. So this is um, this is likely because of a GPU setting in like let's say uh, like adjust desktop color settings. Like this is probably you know it's something like this. So something in here is changed to be um, different. Digital vibrance. No, I don't know. But uh, basically, the, the way Intel handles the colors is different than the way NVIDIA handles the colors. So, um, But we are definitely seeing it swap back and forth. And now we have the NVIDIA GPU active. So this definitely has advanced Optimus. Awesome. Awesome sauce and makes me even happier that I bought this. Um, so like this is the kind of thing I wish they, the Alienware had. Uh, and like there is some word that the X17 may get that feature later on down the road, uh, manually adding it. But um, because it, let's say it actually does have it, but they just disabled it in software. So we'll see if that happens with the X17. Maybe it already happened. I always wasn't paying attention. But sorry, and sorry guys in chat. I'm busy trying to figure this out. I wasn't reading chat. Let's go ahead and get this running and take a look at the results. Um, oh yeah, I want to make sure we're in performance mode. We should be in performance mode. We are. Okay. Very, very cool. Uh, I had originally bought the AMD L7. Just switched my order to this exact model. Nice. Um, robotic, I was saying... Do, 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 do. With my high school electronics degree, I stick to that statement. Sure. Do, do. Looks like you guys are chatting back and forth. I love it. You guys are just like talking tech in the chat. It's so cool. I guess you guys let me know. Um, let me know if you <laughs> want any questions answered. Okay. Uh, the <laughs> the overlay is too small to see. We are pulling 162 watts up here. Um, our temperatures are very good still. That are just starting out, but they didn't spike very quickly. We're at 59 and 60. 99% GPU usage. Six, one, we're pulling 161 watts of power to the GPU, so we're not pulling the full six, 165, but we're not doing the base 150 either. 162 watts. I'm guessing you probably need to use uh, less juice on the CPU if you want it to go all the way to 165 watts.
So far, that's very promising initial. Do you test Thunderbolt output to displays? Is it possible to drive two monitors, each 2K 165 hertz with this laptop? Um, you can definitely do two monitors at 165 hertz QHD, no problem. Um, but you might have to do two separate display connectors. Um, so, yeah. But that should be fine. Uh, Dre Frank, Gizmo Bro, your vids were the only thing that kept me going while waiting for my X17 to show up. I got the same spec you ordered, and I love it. Cool, Dre Frank. I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying it, man. Uh, certainly a very high-performance machine. Uh, Brett, you get what you pay for in the end. From what I could get, uh, GP66 is the cheapest 3080 laptop. It's one of the cheapest, Brett. Um, it's certainly one of the cheapest that actually has a MUX switch. Will a 130, oh sorry, will a 3080 16 gig 130 beat a 3070 140? Mystery Unknown, I did talk about this earlier. Um, they're going to be very close in performance. Epic Ayusha, I'm going to get the G5, uh, G14 RTX 3060 Full HD 144 hertz display. I heard there's ghosting on the 2020 model. Is there ghosting on the 2021 version as well? Um, yes, there is ghosting, Epic, uh, but it's less bad. It's, uh, but yeah, so it, if you're really bothered by ghosting, you probably want to try to get the QHD version instead, or maybe get the Razer Blade 14 instead. Um, like if you're if you're a very focused competitive gamer that does not want to deal with ghosting at all. Okay, so right now we're pulling 85 watts of power to the CPU, and we were pushing higher temperatures too. I think it was getting close to 90, 85, 90. Okay, so first test, 12,618 for our graphic score. CPU score, 98.22. So our CPU score is not amazing, but it's solid. Um, so overall, Overall, it's pretty good. Um, especially the GPU score is very good. The CPU score is kind of mixed, I think. Again, I'm not I'm not anticipating as much CPU performance from this. Um, and I'm saying so. Let me let me try to clarify that statement. Um, I'm saying that the CPU score is mixed because um, I believe we got over eleven thousand on the Alienware X17. So that's a thousand more points, I believe. If I'm recalling correctly, uh, I think. It, when we hooked it up to an external display, I'm pretty sure we got quite a bit more. Uh, okay, so we're in performance mode. We're ready to check this out. Um, let's find out what we get in Cinebench R20. Um, also, well, this is going to be a bad run. It's fine. It's just a warm-up run. Let's get HW info open so we can see the wattage and power and everything. Um, I got it from my daughter and it still bothered me and returned it. LOL Land Tech got the money getting the G14 for the daughter, man. That is nice of you to do that. Um, okay, so 4.5 gigahertz. We did not have an undervolt on this machine at all right now. Um, looks like we spiked up to 91 degrees Celsius. Ooh, we're pulling 114 watts of power. Okay. That's a very good initial boost. Let's see if it can maintain 115 watts of power. If it can, I'm going to be super impressed. Um, and if it can, that also means they have very good shared heat pipes between the CPU and GPU. 5638. Ooh, that's a good first run. That's a really, really good first run. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, I was going to say, it looked like it stopped at 80 watts there. I was like, oh no, we're being throttled to 80 watts. But it went back up to 114. Our clock speeds are holding steady at 4.49. Our temperatures are getting kind of spicy, getting into the 90s on a few of the cores. Three of the cores have spiked to 92, 93. But most of them are holding around the mid 80s or low 80s, like low 80s, upper, upper 70s, low 80s. Our clock speed has now dropped to 4.3, 4.2, 4.19 basically. 4.29. Um, our 
TDP has dropped to 91 watts. Uh, 89 watts now. 5380. So still very good performance out of this machine, but not quite as high as the Alienware X17, at least in terms of raw sustained CPU performance. Still very, very good, I think, though. Very impressed uh, overall. So that basically puts the Alienware roughly about like, what, three to five percent faster in terms of CPU performance, something like that. We'll see how this does over an extended session here. Uh, any plans to review the S17? Uh, currently, Ryan, no, but it's a possibility. Um, if Asus sends me one, I will. Uh, I would probably do it, but uh, we'll see. It's certainly a uh, a solid CPU performance in that machine. Fifty three oh eight. I'm primarily concerned with seeing. Uh, I want to see what kind of wattage we pull on the CPU. Because each time we restart each run, we're getting like a quick boost up to like 115 watts, and then it drops down to 90 watts or so. So basically what that tells me is our sustained watts are right around 8990. Um, like 89.993 is what it... 89.6, 87.7, 90.5. Yeah, basically 90 watt power limit on the, on the CPU. And that translates to a 4.1 nine gigahertz clock boost occasionally jumping a little higher than that but it looks like it's hanging right around 4.19 4. Uh, like 4.2 to 4.3 gigahertz on average basically uh are the temperatures lower uh than on the x17 um yes and we have not undervolted this either so 5225 for that run the temperatures are a bit lower than the x17 by about um 10 degrees so you can see that we're hitting power limit throttling but we haven't hit any thermal limit throttling which is good basically the 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 cpu is running within spec of what lenovo has set it to and lenovo has set the cpu to throttle sooner than alienware did like Lenovo is basically running the cpu at like 90 to 95 percent of the potential and alienware tuned it in the BIOS firmware to run it at uh, basically as fast as it can possibly go, taking it all the way to 100 degrees Celsius. So, and the core, the, the, the main thing, the main difference there is the 90 watt power limit versus like, like I said, the Alienware was running, I think about 108 watts of power. So the Alienware X17 just running about 18 more watts of power through the CPU. Um, so, and it was averaging closer to 5,400, so about 125 more points or 150 more points. But that's still very good. That's still very good. Um, Kanishki says, hey, Gizmo, why is it that the laptop can easily handle the 80-watt GPU but struggles to cool the 35-watt 77HQ? Uh, okay, so... Um, so Kanishki, Modi, you're basically asking why can your laptop cool an 80 watt GPU but not a 35 watt uh, CPU? And the reason is because the CPU and GPU will have different heat pipes usually going to each one, unless sometimes they do a shared heat pipe or two between the two. Um, and in some cases, they do like three or four shared heat pipes. Like in the new Asus laptops, there's usually three to four shared heat pipes. 5411 that time, very nice. Um, overall, very impressed with the initial performance without undervolting. Um, I want to see what we get undervolting. I think, did we do a restart? I think we might have to restart the machine. Let's just go ahead and I'm going to cancel this. So right around 53 to 5400 for our un, un undervolted speed. Um, let's go ahead and undervolt it and see what kind of state of mesh performance we get. Can someone tell me if this is worth it for the price? Uh, mystery, I would say, oh wait, oh, you have a, you're asking specifically on the, it looks like a Strix G533. Um, <laughs> looks like the Autobot didn't like you. 
didn't like you uh, posting the specific link. All right, let me try to look it up for you, man. Right, I'll show your comment. G533QS. Okay. Um, so one thing I would say be super cautious of when you're buying on Newegg these days, Amazon these days, a lot of these websites is that there are third-party sellers that are marking prices up drastically. So uh, most most of these that are not shipped by Newegg are not going to be worth it at all. So this is a 3080 5900HX. Scar 15, this is totally worth it at this price. I think this is a good price. Um, nice, nice, nice. Uh, this one is marked up a little bit, but most likely HID Evolution is also repasting it. Uh, it'll just depend if you want the repaste job or not. Uh, the ASUS paste job is really good anyway. Uh, so I'm not sure which one you're looking at, but uh, this one is probably worth that price, though, if that's what you're wondering. Okay, let's go back. Let's try to undervolt this thing real quick. This is the first time I've seen a laptop more expensive in US than Denmark. Interesting. Oh wait, what did that say? I gave an error when I tried to open Intel XTU. Unable to start Intel XTU because the drivers are not present. Install the latest drivers. Interesting. Very interesting. I'll have Intel. Uh, okay, I will let... I don't want them to... I don't want another utility to be constantly running in the background. So if this does that, then I'm going to not be happy. <laughs> and I'll probably uninstall the, the support assistant because I don't want pop-ups. and Like I want to manually install it myself. Um, Paolo says, hey, Gizmo, I saw this Razer Blade 15 on sale. Six cores, 2070 Max-Q with 4K OLED display. Is it worth getting in 2021? Um, so so 2070 Max-Q with a 4K OLED display, Razer Blade 15. I would say that that is probably worth, versus the competition of what's currently available, that's at most worth maybe 1500 So... If you're if they're asking for more than fifteen hundred, probably not worth it. If it's used, I would say more like thirteen hundred, four twelve hundred in good condition. Um Kanishki Modi, the CPU has just fewer cores between one or two. With undervolts he's used to stay cool at six five watts, but it says anywhere BIOS update. Okay. Do do. Oh, interesting. Uh, we've got a Bluetooth, Intel graphics, and in Windows Ten Wi Fi driver. Oh, installing this graphics driver from Intel may remove customizations from your computer OEM. I don't want to install that then. Uh, but I'm, I may not be able to run Intel XTU without doing this driver update. I don't... Yeah. Well, we may not be able to undervolt this without replacing Lenovo's driver, which may break other things, which makes me hesitant to recommend undervolting this device until that's fixed. Looks like we have a Wi-Fi AX201 for our Wi-Fi adapter. Um, and we can definitely update that driver. Uh, 
Dre Frank, serious question. Is battery life the only benefit to Optimus? I actually prefer my laptops without Optimus because I use NVIDIA, DSR, and love it. Um, so uh, battery life is a benefit with Optimus, but also things like Intel QuickSync. Like if you want to use the Intel GPU to boost uh, video rendering in, say, Adobe Premiere Pro, that's usually the fastest way to render a file. So uh, Intel QuickSync is another key feature that uh, NVIDIA Optimus provides. If you are in Direct Connect only, where well, you can't read the Intel Intel CPU, GPU, uh, well, you can't read the Intel GPU, then you're not going to be able to take advantage of Intel QuickSync. That's probably the biggest downside. Is Undervolt an option in BIOS? Uh, ARP, it may be, ARP. Uh, you may need to enable undervolting in the BIOS. So that may be the way to do it rather than using Intel XTU. Um, and in some ways, it may be easier to do that as well because if you undervolt with just Intel XTU, um, the undervolt may not hold. Uh, you have to maybe set it up every time you restart your machine. So uh, depending on how, like with Alienware, so that's how you had to do it, which is pretty annoying. Let's get uh, this Bluetooth downloaded and set up as well. Um, so overall, let's just let's just uh, for now. I think we're not going to. Maybe we should hop into the BIOS real quick. I think I think we will try to hop into the BIOS to see what the options are. I think you guys will want to see that. So let's try to check that out. Oh, speakers. Yeah, we'll do the speakers test. Okay, we'll do the speakers test right now. I'm sure they should be really good still, though. Um, Sam Hollow Light. Okay, here we go. Let's go and see what they sound like. Um, uh, I can try enabling a different audio. I'm going to try switching my mic here so you can hear the speakers better. Test. Test. Okay, I think this will work for the speakers. Let's find out. Very nice speakers, I would say. Um, quality mids, got some lows. The clarity is there. You're feeling a little bit of the bass. Um, definitely above average speakers. I have to test the volume, but I think it's going to be at least decent, decent volume. So I really like the speakers. Let me switch. Okay. The audio is clipping like crazy. Okay. Let me, I might be able to do that again. Hold on. I just got to turn it down. Test. Okay. I've reduced the decibels now. Let's try it again. Also, not sure. Yeah, that's the right one. Okay. So I'm not sure if that helped with the audio. Hopefully that helped. But overall, I would say I'm definitely impressed with the speakers. Still clipping. I'd have to do more testing, guys. I can't hear what it sounds like. That's the problem. I have to actually like record it, listen to it, and try to tweak the sounds. So I don't want to do that live right now. Uh, but just know that the speakers are quite good um, all around speakers. And I can definitely think that most, most people will really enjoy the speakers. So any idea how accurate the GeForce experience performance tracking, the thing reporting, uh, I do not know the G4, I don't know how accurate the GeForce experience performance tracking is. Um, I would say that most of the time the, uh, the best way to track performance is going to be with a, an overlay to view what it's doing live or to have a log that is like logging your actual clock speed over a period of time. So let me see if I can get into the BIOS real quick. At the end of this live stream, I'm going to go over. Let's see here. Did that put me in the BIOS? Delete. Nope, it's not the delete key. 
Um, I'm going to go over how I think this stacks up with the GE76 and Alienware X17 in the conclusion, basically. Sucks that Lenovo won't let us access the advanced BIOS. Mm, that's a bummer. Maybe they will eventually. Maybe they're afraid of what users will do. Okay, here we are. So F2 is what you need to press to get into the BIOS. It just I wish they would standardize which button to press to get into the BIOS. It's, sometimes it's F2, sometimes it's delete. Sometimes, you know, it's weird. So, okay. Um, so arrows will work. Also, we have a mouse in the BIOS. So I'm still using my mouse. So you can do overclocking here you can turn on gpu overclocking you can turn on advanced overclocking overclocking is a change to the factory specifications of the computer this might cause malfunction or damage warranty will not apply if it happens okay so i can apply a 100 megahertz offset um, that will probably be be safe um, a 100 megahertz offset will likely on the vast majority of 3080s not cause any performance issues. Also, VRAM clock offsets, a lot of these can go up to like 500 or 700. Uh, sometimes you can't go to 100. Sometimes it's only like 50. It just depends. Um, so under more settings, I just clicked more settings. This came up here. Let's see if we can access any kind of undervolting. Um... Enable and disable Intel VMD controller. What does VMD controller stand, uh, stand for? Let me see if I can. I feel like they should have some kind of a undervolting option in here. Always on USB, foolproof FN control. Charge in battery mode. Disable or enable charging external devices when system is in hibernated or power off state. Disable building in battery. Enable. Disable building in battery. Temporarily disable battery for servicing the system. Oh, that's pretty cool. So you don't have to unplug the battery. So you could disable the battery so that you can um, swap out the RAM without having to unplug the battery. Flip to boot lets the system boot to desktop without pressing the power button. So whenever you turn on the display, self-healing system will back up BIOS firmware and self-heal the BIOS in a crash. Ultra quiet mode, set the settings in BIOS for ultra quiet mode or normal auto mode. Memory enhance, restore default overclocking. Whether to restore default overclocking value, restore the default overclocking value, do not restore the, okay. I don't see anything in here related to um, the undervolting, but let me see if chat has anything for me. VMD is for rating uh, the a and NVMe drives. Okay, thanks, Christopher. Appreciate that. Uh, Intel is not as good for portability because it has significantly worse battery life. Also, louder AMD versions will be a bit uh, slower, less noticeable at QHD, but in but also there. Um, so I think the biggest difference too with uh, Intel versus AMD is just the performance you get with how much power is going through the CPU. You know, the with Intel CPUs, you need more power to be able to um, get the same level of performance as you do on a Ryzen CPU. And so that means that you're going to need a beefier, better cooling or more heat pipes in the design to get the same performance. But I, I do believe Intel is going to be the best overall performance at maximum uh if you if you have the proper thermal design in both part of that's too also you're gonna be able to undervolt most intel i9 processors and increase the performance that way um, and potentially increase the power limits like intel i9s tend to be a lot more um, open than say the ryzen 5900hx which has typically hard hard locked power limits and no undervolting okay so i'm not Intel PPTT. Okay. As of now, Lenovo is not enabled advanced BIOS menu, so we can't change CPU or memory settings from the BIOS. 
Makes sense, Christopher. I believe you. I'm not seeing anything in here. I'm kind of reading through everything. Um, so I'm anticipating we'll be able to undervolt this machine. It may still be possible if you install the right driver. But out of the box, it looks like no undervolting initially. I do think it's cool they have all these um, all these basic options. Or all these advanced options are more advanced, really. Okay. That's the advantage of 7 nanometer, baby. And AMD really thought ahead of its time three to four years ago when they designed the Zen 3 CPUs. Yeah. I already bought the Legion 7 5900HX3080 model. I'm happy with my purchase, and I'm wondering if the Intel version would have been better. Uh, Philippo S, um, I think the performance is going to be very similar. Um, if you have the money and you like, if you had $3,500, then the i9 version, yes, it'll be a little bit faster. But in terms of bang for the buck, both the Ryzen and the i7 model will be better than the the i9 version for sure. What is the best laptop that has good battery life of eight hours? There's a lot of great laptops that have good battery life these days. So, okay, we can try running um, 3D Mark again, seeing if it's stable. And then uh, with, because we did apply an overclock through the BIOS. I wish the Zephyrus Duo had a MUX switch. I was so happy, but performance was bad. Gotcha. Yeah, especially in certain games. A lot of games won't affect you as much, but you know, when you pay so much for a laptop and it doesn't have a MUX switch, you're just like, but but this other three thousand dollar laptop does have one and gives me a little bit of a performance boost, you know. So okay. Let's give Time Spy another run. Then we'll try Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Oh, real quick, let me cancel this. And I'm going to get Afterburner going and change the overlay so it's bigger, so it's easier for you guys to see it. Um, so MSI is reading the overclock. That's nice. Um, and I'm guessing you can still overclock using MSI rather than doing it through the BIOS, which is what I would much rather do in case you need to uh, you know, adjust up and down and find the sweet spot. You don't have to restart and go into the BIOS every time you want to change something. Gizmos of Tech, is it possible to measure how much power the Legion 7i delivers to the CPU when under max CPU and GPU load? Um, so David Jones, that's what I do in every one of my reviews videos. Um, I'll, I'll usually do um, a stress test where I run the Heaven benchmark and then uh, the Fire Strike physics test at the same time, which basically pulls at very close to the maximum possible wattage from both at the same time. Is there a difference between applying the overclock through the afterburner or in the BIOS? Um, one definite difference, oh, looks like the, uh, the overclock was too much. So it looks like we're going back to the BIOS. I remember my two thousand. Uh, so the one difference between Afterburner and in the BIOS is that uh, if you do it in Afterburner, you don't have to restart and go to the BIOS to change it. Um, that said, if you're doing with Afterburner, you have to make sure Afterburner is set to open every time you load Windows. So there's that's the kind of the downside of the afterburner. Like where if you do it through the BIOS, it'll automatically apply uh, regardless. 
So you don't have to have another application open at the same time. So let's just turn off overclocking for now. I was worried that the 11980HK would burn up, but pleasantly surprised little Lenovo did an amazing job with cooling this year in their favorite chamber. Uh, yeah, Dark Hollow, I think this is um, impressive enough thermal performance. Uh, even though the, the, the power limit is, you know, maybe not as high as the X17, uh, we are getting better temperatures while still getting 90, 90 95% the performance, at least in Cinebench. So, and if I were to undervolt it, I'm really curious how high the performance would go. Probably at least 5,600 consistently, I would think, as long as we've got a decent undervolt to apply. I remember my 2010 Lenovo IdeaPad had a physical switch for the software to change GPUs. So clearly manufacturers can put some sort of GPU switching. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's GPU switching technology is not a new innovation, really. Okay, let's go shadow the Tomb Raider. We'll run the shadow the Tomb Raider benchmark. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the plan for now, I think. Um, I am going to do a whole... Looks like... I want to make sure that we're set to 165 hertz, too. Oh, and we want to make sure that we're running on the right GPU as well. Currently on NVIDIA GPU only. That's good. Um, exclusive full screen. Monitor refresh rate 165. Graphics set to highest. Cool. Very nice. All right. Here we go. Let's see what we get in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Uh, this will be very indicative. Uh, the performance we get in this will be very indicative of whether or not we have fast RAM in this machine or not. So, like, uh, we know that, that uh, we're running with a direct connection to the GPU, so we don't have Optimus slowing us down there. Uh, so if we score low on this test, then we know that uh, the RAM will likely need uh, an upgrade if you want to get necessarily optimal or peak performance. Okay. So we'll run this at, to do the test and do it comparatively speaking, so we know we need to run this at 1080p too, which will be uh, more memory sensitive than running at QHD. More likely to be CPU bound, that's the reason. Okay. Um, also, before we run this, I want to make sure, again, just make sure nothing changed. We are in performance mode. It says we're in hybrid mode here, but we've confirmed through NVIDIA control panel that we are in NVIDIA direct connection mode only. So I think that's the thing you got to look at is just ignore what Lenovo Vantage says and just run off of what the NVIDIA control panel says you're on. All right. Run benchmark. Here we go. Uh, Dana Pink, bang for the buck, Legion 5 Pro i7 3070 or se Legion 7 i7 3080. Is there a big difference in CPU and GPU performance? Um, CPU performance will likely be very similar. GPU performance um, will be 10, 10 to 15% difference. So you have to decide if that's the, worth the price. The Legion 5 Pro versus the Legion 7 really is heavily based on, um, what am I trying to say? Uh, it's like, it's kind of like a more premium experience on the Legion 7, basically. Okay, so I'm pretty sure we're getting less performance than we were on the Alienware X17. I'm going to pull that up, pull up my VOD of the X17 so I can um, compare performance metrics with this versus the because you know 
This might cause the stream to lag a little bit, so I apologize if that's the case. Uh, pause this. Okay. Uh, okay. Checking. 1080p on an external monitor. So Oh, that's right. I had to redo it. I had to switch monitors to my other monitor on that stream. So looking here, I, it does look like we're, I think we're probably getting reduced performance here compared to the Alienware. So I'm guessing a memory upgrade will be in order for people that want to have maximum possible performance. Thankfully, I already have fast memory for my SCAR 15. I should be compatible with this, this laptop. I'll have to double check that. Okay, so I think I've found the proper benchmark for 1080. Let's see what we got with this machine versus the Alienware X17. 117 FPS? Oh, yeah, definitely memory issues. Definitely slow RAM. Um, we got 137 FPS, so 20 FPS faster on the Alienware X17 with their faster 3466 megahertz XMP memory. So, um, yep, yeah, a memory upgrade is definitely something to consider for this machine. I'm, I'm very curious to see what my performance would be like with my upgraded RAM from my SCAR 15. Is the wattage on the GPU a bit low? Um, Daniel, it's because of the CPU bottleneck if the wattage is low. I mean, essentially, that's the the reason is that if you have, um, trying to explain this, basically, uh, if the CPU uh, can't process the frames fast enough because it has slower latency memory, then, this, then the GPU will be bottlenecked by that slow RAM um, in the in the chain basically now not all games are going to be affected by this uh very much but um but yeah shadow of the tomb raider definitely a game that is being affected by it so people call it high density ram versus lower density um it's it's definitely um a factor that said i, I just want to make sure that i don't think we clearly know what is causing the ram speed differences it's it could it, it essentially though what it comes down to is some ram is faster and slower than others like ram speeds are very difficult to understand and diagnose i think so um like when someone says they figured out exactly what it is like you know jared says that it's uh likely a ram timings issue i'm 10 that's the that's the camp i'm going down um we also have things like single rank versus dual rank uh which is kind of a RAM density issue. Um, ultimately, what it comes down to and the way you can diagnose your own laptop is what is the actual speed and what kind of frame rate do you get in the games um, when it's a measurable, comparable test. Um, like that, like I said, things like CPU, uh, CPU benchmark, that's the name of the benchmark. You can do a RAM test on that and, and check. You can check it out. Okay, Tabula Dragon. Can you try overclocking it? Um, I did overclock it a little bit in the in the BIOS, but it it went to 
uh, it was too high and it crashed. So I am not going to do overclocking right now. There's everything is stock right now, and I couldn't undervolt it with Intel XDU or with the uh, from the BIOS. So let's go ahead and see what we got for settings. Right now we are on. We're just going to set everything to ultra. We're going to set DLSS to quality. Ray tracing is set to ultra. All of this is correct. We're going to go full screen. All right, so we're going to do QHD. Everything's set to ultra. And then, oh, and since we're in QHD, we need to go to balanced. That's the way I test QHD in Cyberpunk. So should be able to resume. There we go. Okay. So here we go. Are you ready? Boom. 55 FPS on average so far to start out with. That's very good. Uh, our GPU is pulling 145 watts, which is still pretty good. We're nearing maximum GPU saturation at 98%. So the memory, for example, is not holding us back very much here, which makes sense. We're running QHD resolution. Um, CPU is getting kind of warm at 89 degrees, but it's still solid mid 80s. Um, 65 watts of power to the CPU. I saw up to 70 something watts of power. Um, overall, this is still, I believe, solid performance. So, Lalit Sengal, you got the 32 gigs of RAM. So, perhaps, like, I got the 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, maybe the 32 gig RAM version of this machine has faster RAM than the 16 gigs. So, 5343 for our QHD test. Um, I'm not sure how that stacks up. I can kind of take a look at benchmarks but real quick, but I'm pretty sure that that's a solid result, but not necessarily like um, amazing. But I, yeah, I, don't, I guess I don't have any 16 by 10 QHD benchmarks to compare it with. So um, I guess that is really good then because we're doing 16 by 10, which is going to be a bit more draw because I was thinking more like 57 or 58 would have been really good. It's kind of my hope. Um, but since we're doing 16 by 10, that's an increase in resolution kind of noticeably. So let's go ahead and see what it's like doing an actual gameplay loop here. Very smooth, very easy to control still. Um, and we should have G-Sync running right now. Uh, and that reduces screen tearing and stuff like that. What is this flashing? Do you guys see that it's like flashing on the display? It's like the game changed this setting or uh, this section of the game. This has never happened on any laptop before. So I'm curious if there's something. Something's going on. I don't know if it's related to the game design. It seems like the game was like designed to do something, like something's popping up on the display. Time's over. Okay. Nice. The speakers are nice to play with. Um, like I can you can hear the gameplay quite clearly. Even without headphones. Okay. Very nice. Let's go to the sniper section. So why doesn't it go to 165 watts now? Other bottlenecks here, I'm guessing. So, uh, Daniel, you have to understand that uh, it's a range from 150 to 165. Um, and then it's also GPU saturation issues where... Um, like if the CPU is bottlenecking us a little bit, you're basically looking at uh, having reduced frame rates as well as GPU utilization. And anytime your GPU utilization is not at 100%, you're basically going to have lower wattage utilization at the same time. Like this is definitely perfectly playable, even on RTX Ultra. 50 to 45. I, I could play the game at this at these settings right here. Uh, 
Fans at 100%? No. Um, fans are on performance mode. You cannot set the the Legion laptops to 100% fans, so which is kind of a bummer. But our temperatures would be better if we could set this to 100%. Daniel Barakey with the ten dollars. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, you know, I can run the game in the um, in a city center of the as well. But I mean, the the car ride where I do the tests in the car is. Um, pseudo like that because it's like a dry it's like a set passage being driven where all those pedestrians and buildings and stuff are around you but uh but yeah dude thanks so much for the ten dollars daniel appreciate it a uh, hybrid mode may be killing some performance there discrete made mode may push more fps uh we are in discrete mode even though lenovo vantage says it's like in lenovo here it says that we're in hybrid mode but we're not if you go to the nvidia control panel You can see that we're in NVIDIA GPU mode only, so we're not being hindered by Optimus at all here. Okay, so let's go ahead and just tool around the city a little bit. Let's see here. Let's try to go to Go to a section where that is busy. Uh, it's been a while since I played. How do I set a waypoint? Because I thought, I thought you just right clicked on the map and it set the waypoint, but I guess not. Okay. Uh, Lincoln Highway says super chatting for a 32 gig RAM kit recommendation for this laptop, if possible. I'm a wet match in a dark cave when it comes to RAM. Um, so I don't know if the 32 gig RAM is going to be faster than the standard 16 gigs kit. Um, but uh, Lalit Sengal says that it's faster, but I haven't tested it. So um, I would say wait to get confirmation or wait until you have like official tests or something in some way before you change your order from 16 gig to 32 gigs, unless you just know you're going to need 32 gigs. But um, otherwise, in general, I would recommend buying fast RAM that you know will be fast. Oh, the game crashed. Cyberpunk doing cyberpunk things. Cyberpunk is flatlined. <laughs> so cyberpunk didn't like that. Um, let's try to get to a better spot. But uh, Lincoln Howie, thanks so much for the super chat. Um, and so just in general, though, I do recommend a RAM upgrade if you're going to spend $3,600 on a laptop. I just don't know if the 32 gig RAM upgrade from Lenovo is the right move or not, because I don't know how fast that is. So does that make sense? Yeah, so Lincoln Highway, um, if you got 32 gigs set, my recommendation would be to, uh, I think the last thing I'll do today is do a user benchmark test. Okay, let's just go ahead and exit this. Um, let's go ahead and download user benchmark just so people can compare results here. So user benchmark will run a RAM test as part of the test that they do. And this will let us know if, um, you know, we can compare that RAM speed and the latency in the test with other uh, machines. So I just wanna make sure, uh, yeah, let me just close everything down and rerun the test here. Okay, I'm gonna. I want to rerun the test because I was closing stuff. It only takes about like a minute or two. Okay, so now it's doing the RAM latency. And that's the only thing I care about. So I guess it's probably just fine. Um, but uh, 
but yeah, that, that's that's the thing I would test. If you're trying to figure out if you should upgrade the RAM, then running this benchmark will be a quick and easy test to know. Yo, Gizmo, is this the pre-built version? Uh, no, original creator. This is the um, this is a customized version that I bought uh, from the custom checkout. We found a way to turn off the RAID. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean, original. So you're saying that it comes ra with RAID SSDs by default? Do I have the new HP Omen 17? I do not. Matthias Bossman, thanks so much for the 20... Um, 20 euros, I think. Uh, Super chat, appreciate it. Hey, Gizmo, did you hear from anyone who has had problems with the trackpad and two finger scroll on the Razor Blade 14? I bought two models and two finger scroll not working for me. Thanks for all your testing. So, Matthias, uh, I haven't heard about that issue. Um, my recommendation would be do some Google searching and see what people have found out. But uh, hopefully, if you use the right driver, it'll fix the problem. Um, have you contacted Razor support? Have they, do they have a driver recommendation? Oftentimes advanced users will figure out which driver to use instead of whatever manufacturer driver is set by default. And it'll fix those kinds of tracking two finger scrolling issues like that. Um, you know, like, some, like people used to uninstall the default, uh, driver that the manufacturers would send you and just use the Microsoft, um, precision touchpad drivers. So you might want to try that. Did your Legion 7i come with two one terabyte SSDs? It comes with a factory seven RAID zero. Um, no, I just got the one terabyte SSD because I know that I'm going to use my two. Uh, I'm planning to switch my two 16, sorry, my two eight gig SSDs over into the Legion 7. That's my goal is to switch it over. Hey, Gizmo, when's the review for the G15 Advantage Edition coming? Uh, tomorrow, I am still working on it. I'm sorry for the slow delay or the long delay getting it done. But uh, I was testing the G15 Advantage, uh, playing around with it two days ago. It's a little concerning that the games, the CPU didn't boost much past 50 watts at all. If the CPU is limited like that, does the AMD version might perform slightly better. So David Jones, you have to have a game that tries to pull more wattage because some games are need more CPU performance versus others, so uh, don't really work. Don't really look at that as an indicator of performance. Okay, looks like the user benchmark is done. We're one hundred and forty seven percent performance. Yeah, awesome. Um, so, wait. It says I have a one terabyte. Oh, that's a two terabyte SSD. Okay, that's my external SSD. I was like, wait, what? Okay, so it looks like we have the Micron slow RAM in here. You can see that our latency goes up to 91 uh, NS. This is this is a very high latency. Also, our gigabyte speeds are only 24.6. I believe faster gigabyte speeds would be more like 45 to 60 range. Um, I believe the speeds... I'm not sure exactly all of the speeds, but I, uh, how to read this, but I think 45 to 50 is kind of the target zone for where you want to be. Uh, but yeah, this is definitely slow RAM. Definitely recommend an upgrade, um, at least if this is the, the RAM that you have. Um, and for RAM latency, I'm not sure what the ideal is, but 91 is definitely very high. I think 25 now. I, don't, I have to actually look it up here let me see what my ram and my scar 50 i did this test and i saved a screenshot i think i don't want to say the wrong numbers Let's see if i can i might not be able to find it though uh i'm not sure what the number is i'm not sure where i saved it i think maybe in the legion 7 So, okay. Yes, I found it. Um, hmm. Okay, so the G skill RAM in the Legion 7 did 36 gigs on the multi core and 34.8 gigs on the single core. 
with a latency of 85. So the latency was still not great on the um, G-Skill. I did do the test on the MSI GP66 Leopard 2. Um, I'm very curious what this test would show for the Alienware X17. But uh, let me see if I can just show my display there. Now I can pull it up. So there's the there's the memory test for the G Skill 64 gig set that I have in my Scar 15 right now. Um, and I'm not sure if the timings are necessarily set to the optimal because this is third party RAM put into my Scar 15. So I feel like these could be tuned better because this is not this is not the RAM that came with it, but um, the results I got on the GP66 were definitely better than those, at least for the latency. I think it was closer to 45, 50 nanoseconds. I am not sure, though. Don't quote me on that. Okay. Who knows what kit to buy for fast RAM? Um, yeah, that's a very good question, and I'm probably going to make a video on that because I'm actually tempted to buy several different kits and try them all with the Legion 7. So... Yeah. Are you going to test the Advantage RAM with the new RAM versus stock RAM? Um, I don't know if I will, but I know that you will get a performance difference uh, tomorrow because that one also has the same... I think it's the exact same RAM as this one, the this Micron RAM. It's just like a... It just sucks that you spend $3,600 and you get the slow RAM in a high-end machine. So, um, Yeah. La, la, uh, what's up, Jared? Lelo Lenovo. What's up, Jared? Uh, have been a while since you stopped by the stream. Jared from Jared's Tech was at least in the chat a minute or two ago. I just scrolled up and saw him. But, um, but yeah. Okay. So, my take on the Legion 7 versus the Alienware X17 versus the GE76. I have had my hands on all three of those laptops. Um, I think the biggest advantage of the Legion 7i is that it is a sleeker, lighter weight package, more like the chassis size of a 15-inch machine, while still packing comparable power to the GE76 and the Alienware X17. So that's the biggest advantage. But um, in terms of raw CPU performance, the Alienware X17 is the number one because it's pulling much higher wattage than the GE76 or the Lenovo 7i. It's pulling over like 108 watts of power consistently nonstop, but the temps are also very high. So it's kind of a double-edged sword there. Um, but the, the raw performance is there, and also the memory speed is there. The GE76, the memory speed is there. The Lenovo, not great memory speed. It kind of sucks. Um, that the default kit here is just not amazing. Um, you know, when you pay so much for a laptop, you expect to have faster memory speed. This is going to hold you back in CPU-sensitive, memory-sensitive games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider if you play it at 1080p. If you play it at the native resolution of the display, the memory won't hold you back as much. It'll be a smaller bottleneck. So, yeah, unless you play heavily CPU-bound games like Fortnite... Uh, on really low settings, Apex Legends on really low settings, uh, you know, games like that, maybe Warzone, um, the memory upgrade won't be very noticeable. So just be very mindful of like, don't necessarily just be like, oh, Lenovo is trash because their memory is bad. Uh, it's going to vary from user to user and game to game um, and what resolution you play. So just keep that in mind. Um, Overall, CPU performance was very good on this, despite it not quite having as high of CPU um, power limits. The, um, the GPU performance across the Alienware X17, the GE76, and the Lenovo 7i is going to be very comparable, all going to pull like 150 or so watts under a dual load and push a little bit higher when under a GPU-only load, but that does not happen very often in modern games. Most modern games use a lot of CPU juice as well. Um, yeah, so that I think is the most important comparisons. Other than that, you have things like uh, display quality, the Alienware X17 um, 
has one of the has a bit better display i think than the lenovo 7i because you got a higher color gamut on the display um, but a similar brightness um, i think the ge76 has the best overall uh, display because you get qhd 240 hertz uh, so that's i think i think that's the best blend in terms of like if you're a competitive player and you want to have a higher resolution so if you play a game like fortnite qhd 240 hertz you likes to be able to hit 240 hertz qhd um, so overall i still think the lenovo 7i is probably the best bet for me right now because i'm my goal is to have a moderately portable machine that has good performance you've got advanced optimus on this machine um you've got very high cpu performance uh, as long as, as as long as you replace the ram you're gonna have very high cpu bound game performance as well because of that advanced optimus uh and the i9 processor so i mean i think i think the 7i is the way to go for people that desire a better blend of portability and performance i think the msi is a great option uh and the x17 are a good option if you don't mind a a bit bigger machine um that has like certain i guess like like the 17 inch chassis for example is a bit beefier and a bit bigger a bit bigger display too though so um you know if you're desiring that bigger display then I think that's probably the biggest draw to those. And of course, the X17 is extra special in the sense that it has that higher CPU uh, watt limit for those just like really high um, CPU performance. So I guess that's that's where I come down. Like in, like like those are I think are the most important things off the top of my head. But um, there's obviously lots of other small differences like webcam versus no webcam. Uh, I think, they, I think they all three have webcams actually, but the quality of the webcam may vary or like, uh, you know, the Alienware X17 has a light up touchpad or like a Windows Hello on the X17. So some of those features are missing, you know, on these other laptops. So um, there's, there's, there's a lot of pro and cons to break down between those laptops. So I can't really talk about all the details, but that's like my brief summary of the differences. Uh, overall impressions of the Lenovo Legion 7i extremely impressed with the build quality the chassis the display um the keyboard the touchpad uh the performance i think on this machine is is there and i think it warrants the price and um yeah i think this is going to be my laptop almost almost for sure this is going to be the laptop that i'll be switching my stuff out of my scar 15 over to this one and then selling the scar 15 so um yeah Yep, yep. And I will be doing a memory upgrade for at least uh, my own use. I'll be swapping the 64 gig RAM sticks over to this one as long as they're compatible. So, um, are the CPU temperatures lower in the 7i than the GE76? So, I would say that the CPU temperatures are like just the thermal design in general is different for the GE76 because the GE76 has two dedicated heat pipes to the CPU. Um, that's going to allow the CPU to maintain a consistently good temperature, whether it's under a CPU or GPU dual load, or if it's only under a CPU only load. But the downside to that is that because you don't have a shared heat pipe or one or two shared heat pipes with the CPU and GPU, then that means that when you're under a CPU only load, then you have a limited TDP on the CPU. So if you're looking to do CPU only rendering, my recommendation would be the Alienware X17 and then the Lenovo 7i, at least if your terms is like, like if you do lots of video editing, the Alienware X17 or perhaps the Zephyrus S17, um, those ones are gonna be your best bets probably for raw CPU performance. Another good one would be the Zephyrus Duo uh, 15, another great CPU performer, but but yeah. Um, I think this is the laptop of the year, personally, Dark Hollow. Yeah, uh, Dark Halo. Yeah, I would tend to agree. I think this is my number one rated laptop overall, but that doesn't mean that other users uh, wouldn't prefer to have the X17 or the GE76 in those particular situations, because depending on what games you play, what display you want, the size of the display, um, stuff like that may change uh, your preference. And I think that... Uh, it's going to vary but for for the vast for most users i think most users would most like 
this Lenovo 7i in terms of no price, no no money barred. Probably this is the number one pick for me right now. Yeah. Lord Battle Surf. Yes, thank you. I'm looking for raw CPU performance. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, so I'll take a couple more questions and then I'm going to probably end the stream. Uh, Miguel Castro says, is the Asus SCAR 17380 good? Uh, yes, Miguel Castro. I still love that laptop. I still think it's a great laptop to consider. Um, but the lack of an advanced Optimus or a MUX switch is going to limit who will consider it because anyone that wants CPU bound game performance is going to be limited with the SCAR 17. Um, in addition, the display options are kind of weird on the SCAR 15 or SCAR 17 um, and not quite as good, not quite as colorful um, or as not all the bells and whistles. I think it's 165 Hertz QHD or a 360 Hertz full HD and you'd have Optimus still bottlenecking CPU performance there. So you're never going to ever get the 360 Hertz uh, performance out of that SCAR 17, which is kind of a bummer. Um, unless you hook it up to an external monitor, but that's the inbuilt display. So it's kind of weird. Like even CSGO is not going to hit 360 Hertz. Um, so the SCAR 17, I think, is, is still a great overall build, design, keyboard, um, execution of a laptop, it's still really, really good. Um, so uh, it, I think I think what it comes down to largely um, for most people is going to be what can they actually buy? Like if you need a laptop right now, like the Lenovo 7i seems to be sold out. Um, the Alienware X17, I think, is still available for purchase. The GE76 is pretty much sold out. Um, and I think the SCAR 17 is kind of sold out. So it's kind of like if you can get one versus the other, then just go ahead and get like you're going to be most likely you're going to be happy with any of those four laptops, like really happy. Um, so, but in terms of like if you're trying to like nitpick and you, you optimize everything, you know, well, the Lenovo 7i doesn't have Windows Hello, the X17 does. I really love Windows Hello. I'm sad that this doesn't have it, you know, like the little things like that um, may sway people from one to the other. So, yeah. Taiki says, uh, keep up the good work. Going to order mine next week. Good, good luck and hope you, everyone picks a laptop that they're going to love, you know? So, pretty crazy having to buy new RAM for a $3,400 <laughs> Legion 7i. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Brandon, I'm serious. If you want to sell your X17, I might be interested. So, Daniel, I've already initiated the return process on the Alienware X17. Did that yesterday. So, yep. Uh, all right, man. Unfortunately, I got to head out. Take care. You did a great job as always. Keep it up. Thanks, Dark Halo. Um, yeah, so that's it for the uh, live stream, everyone. I hope that answers everyone's questions. I tried to get as many questions answered as possible. Um, and I will be adding time codes for everything in the description down below. Or if someone can do that, I do appreciate it. Um, yeah. So... Uh, Gizmo, I saw a notebook check review that the Razer Blade 17 with 11th gen CPUs have high TDP on their GPUs. Uh, can you confirm if you heard this? Uh, Neutron Star, yes, they did increase the TDP, I think, to 130 watts on the new Razer Blade Pro 17, um, which is a step in the right direction. It's not competitive yet with the highest performance machines, but it's definitely better. Um, and I believe they increased the watt limit on the CPU as well. Uh, by like 10 or 20 or something compared to the Razer Blade Pro from last year. I think it goes to 65 watts nonstop. But again, that's still not competitive with some, like the Legion 7i. So um, I still think the build quality... Well, actually, I think the build quality for the 7i is on par with Razer, which is probably the first time I've said that. Like, yeah, like this, the build quality in the 7i is very, very, very good. Um, the all metal build, the the, the RGBs, um, yeah. So I guess still I would say the Razer is just slightly better because of like, for example, an all glass panel. Like you have Gorilla Glass in the Razer Blade Pro 17, right? So you don't have that on here. You don't have a touch panel display option. You don't have quite as high a color gamut. So and you don't have Windows Hello. So the Razer Blade Pro is still just slightly better on the premium scale, probably, but not by much. And in terms of raw build quality, this is very, very close. So 
Should you get the Legion 7 AMD or the Legion 7 Intel? Uh, I think both are really great. I think they're both going to be really comparable. I think it mainly comes down to um, <laughs> which one you can order. That's kind of, Honestly, they're going to have very similar performance. So Lincoln Highway says, uh, does Razer screw with customers by selling them their highest end product with bad RAM? I don't know, Lincoln. I haven't uh, heard about their RAM yet. I haven't heard anything negative about their RAM yet. But as far as I know, yeah. Uh, so Xrude says, AMD way better for the price. Uh, but the thing is, so AMD versus Intel in the Legion 7 lineup, they're the, they, they are the same price. So I think you get the Ryzen 7 5800H uh, and you get the i7 11800H uh, with both with RTX 3060 for the same price, $1799, I believe. So, um, and between those two, I would personally probably go Intel i7 11800H because the games I play, I think, run better on Intel. But that's not necessarily always going to be true. Um, and in terms of raw CPU performance, they're going to be in a right in the same ballpark for within five percent of each other probably generally speaking for games and for performance in general so um battery life probably similar ish too though i would say the razor uh, the the amd might run a little bit cooler on average that's probably the biggest advantage um someone said the 7i was 3400 and it, Legion 7 is 2800 um, I'm not sure about the high-end prices, Xrude, um, but I'm just talking about like the base price. If you if you just compare the i7 11800H versus the uh, Ryzen 7 5800H um, across the models, I think it actually might be a little bit more going the Ryzen 9 5900HX. Like AMD charges less for that CPU upgrade, but it's also a less meaningful CPU upgrade versus the i9 11900HK. So um, people that want the most raw performance, I do recommend this i9-11900H, 11980HK, because that's going to be the best CPU performance overall, but that's also quite a bit more money. How terrible would it be if I ran the Legion 7i in non-native resolution like 1080p? Um, well, I'd recommend keeping it 16 by 10 uh, aspect ratio, even if you drop it down to uh, 1920 by 1200. Um, but uh, it's going to look pretty good. Maybe just a slight bit of fuzziness. Okay. Okay, I'm really going to end it now. That's it, guys. Thanks so much for the stream. Um, thanks so much for tuning in. I'll see you guys in the next one. Brandon out.